It says, uh, today's typical heroin user is a middle-class suburban dweller who started off with prescription painkillers, a new study reports. And the lead researcher says, quote, there really has been a shift in the last several years. There's been a migration of heroin abuse to the suburbs. The shift of heroin use to the suburbs appears to be mainly related to the abuse of prescription narcotics, such as Oxycontin, Vicodin, and such. A subset of people prescribed those medications become addicted. Then they cannot afford to keep abusing the pricey drugs, so they ultimately switch to heroin. In interviews with the researchers, 54 study participants talked about their motivations to switch to heroin, and the number one answer was it's cheap and easy to get. The heroin dealer has changed from the stereotypical image of a guy on a dark street corner in a bad neighborhood. Instead, people report getting heroin from middle-class neighbors or classmates, and the price tag has added to the allure. On the street, Oxycontin can run up to $80 per a pill. But heroin you can get as cheap as $6 a bag. In this study, some heroin abusers said that they didn't at first see themselves as addicts because they didn't fit the stereotypical junkie image. But people need to be educated on what addiction really looks like. You know, and folks, this is a problem that needs to be discussed. And uh, so I've invited to come on the show and talk with me about this a couple of experts who know about this all too well. You've heard us reference Advanced Rapid Detox. Advanced Rapid Detox is a, it's a center, a medical center, that has people literally all over the world coming to it because it's extremely discreet, it's professional, and they offer people an opportunity to get clean from drugs and a lot of people on heroin that are in this very same situation, but they offer them a way to do this in just four days without the pain of withdrawal. And that's one of those sounds too good to be true kind of things. It's actually not. And we've been talking about them and promoting them on the show. And they happen to be in Metro Detroit, which is so ideal because people come from all over the world. But for people here in Metro Detroit, you don't have to travel at all. And so I'm joined right now live in studio uh, first, by Dr. Joseph George. Uh, he's an MD, board certified in addition, addiction medicine. His training in surgery is from the University of Michigan. Uh, he's been in private practice for over 20 years. Extensive experience with internal medicine, outpatient surgery, emergency medicine, and addictionology. And also joining me in studio is Dr. of Pharmacy Ann McCanny. Uh, as well, and uh, also as part of Advanced Rapid Detox is Dr. Julia Aronoff, uh, who's a board-certified anesthesiologist. But uh, Dr. Ann and Dr. Joseph George join me in studio now. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us today. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Now, as I read this story to you, I know this isn't surprising to you because this is something that you deal with every day. So first, Help me understand. I mean, when you think of a, quote, heroin addict or someone that's addicted to heroin or something along those lines or a, a user, if you will, there is a stereotypical image of the junkie in a dark alley somewhere. You tend not to think of the middle class suburbanite. So how does this work that people go from prescription pain pills to heroin addict? Explain that transition, if you would. Uh, these patients, they uh, get prescription medicines from various physicians, and then usually what happens one of these days is these patients are mapped, which is a uh, form of acknowledgement where, where we know that who's using what, and physicians talk to each other. So if we know, for instance, Mr. A is using multiple physicians to get his prescriptions, then physicians talk among themselves and will not prescribe these drugs to that patient. So what happens is this person is going to seek other forms of uh, getting the prescription either as uh, pills or some other forms. For instance, as you mentioned, OxyContin can, can be about $80 per pill. So what is an alternative is getting the cheaper heroin. This can be anybody. It can be a professional. It can be um, it can be like a nurse. It can be a teacher. It can be a um, uh, any worker in the industry. So it really does not um, isolate one person to the other. It can be anybody right. that that we know. 
And uh, Dr. McKinney, now you're a pharmacist and a doctor of pharmacy, and this is something where, because we talked about this before when I was out looking at your operation and checking it out and all, and all of that, uh, that, that, that people don't think of themselves as being junkies, if you will, or something, but it really ends up not so much for the high, if you will, but just a kind of function. I mean, explain that, if you would, where, where people realize suddenly they can't function anymore, and th- by getting heroin, it allows them to function day to day and keep people from recognizing that something's wrong with them. That is correct, Bob. A lot of patients, um, as Dr. George mentioned, they're not um, just drug seekers. A lot of patients, what happens is they're, for some reason or another, they start off with the prescription, whether they had a car accident, some sort of surgery or trauma. And what happens is with continued use, they build up a tolerance to the medicine. So it gets to the point where, like Dr. George said, a lot of times they go and do doctor shopping because what the doctor prescribes them is not enough. So when they cannot no longer afford or they can't get their prescription, a lot of times they end up buying it off the street. And it becomes pretty costly. So in order to maintain um, their habit or their dependence, they go to heroin. And these are, as Dr. George mentioned, I mean, we've had patients in the medical field, anywhere from doctors, nurses, paramedics, government workers such as correctional officers we've had teachers we've had housewives um and you know know what christians and pastors and i mean this this happens to a lot of people we've had we've had uh several uh pastors and it can happen to anyone so bob when patients call me the reason they call me is because they want their life back right They are tired of doing things that they normally wouldn't do. I mean, I have moms call me saying, this is not my daughter. This is not the son I raised. It doesn't matter who you are. We are all human, and anyone taking large amounts of opiates can become addicted. That does not make you a bad person. And I always tell people, whether it's a family member or a loved one, or the patient themselves. I always tell them, give yourself credit for wanting to be free of opiates. That is a first step that you are taking that is good. Don't think of yourself as a junkie. Don't think of yourself as a bad person. You are making a good move. And, you know, um, the thing about it is a lot of patients are not aware what would happen to them and I get that all the time oh if I knew I was going to get to this point so you know with probably pretty common a lot of people that they get to this point they they never in a million they probably say I never in a million years thought that that I would end up down this road yeah you know exactly hang on just hang on the thought if you would because we're going in a short break and I want to pick it up from there in just a couple of minutes but but I also want to uh, I want to encourage everybody right now because I you know, look, folks, you listen to this show. I'm a straight shooter, and I don't I don't shy away from the tough and controversial issues, okay? This is an unspoken problem that nobody seems to want to talk about on the surface, and it needs to be talked about. If you or a loved one right now are hooked on opiates, okay, maybe it started as prescription medication or whatever, but the bottom line, you're to this point now, it's heroin or it's something else, Oxycontin, you name it, uh, you need to get clean, okay? And I understand it needs to be confidential. I understand it needs to be discreet. I understand all of that. And this is completely, and uh, you need to know, you don't have to go through three or four or five or six weeks of withdrawal. This is a four-day program that completely gets you clean. And, uh, and so here's what I want to do. It's Advanced Rapid Detox. Uh, what, what I'd like to do, everybody, is I want to uh, encourage everybody to, to give them a call. And actually, what, uh, what we're going to do 
is uh, I, I want to back at the uh, back at the office right now at Advanced uh, Rapid Detox is Dr. Julia Aronoff, and she's going to be there, uh, available and ready to receive calls from folks. And as a matter of fact, what is uh, Dr. George? What is right now just the best number for people to call to talk directly to Dr. Aronoff? Eight 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 six three seven six nine six eight. That's the same number that we give here. So it's a, so six three seven six nine six eight. That's eight 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 number. So, yes. uh, folks, seriously, t- take this seriously. Make the call eight 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 six three seven six nine six eight. I want to find out how the detoxing works and how that can happen in four days because I know that sounds like too good to be true, one of those kind of things. We do need to explore that. So hang on a second. We'll talk about that next. Just a couple minutes from now here on the Bob Duco Show. 